Hi everyone, this video will not be about biology. It is just a continuation of the course on statistical methods in high energy physics and the current topic is multivariate analysis MVA. Neural networks is however a cool name, much much better than for example a generalization of the Fisher discriminant on transformed input variables. Anyway, in the previous video, we talked about the linear discrimination of signal and background events. Linear means that the test statistic is a linear function of the input variables. You saw that Fisher defined a nice simple algorithm that finds parameters of the linear function. The only thing the algorithm needs are mean values of the input variables and covariance matrices for both signal and background hypotheses. They can be estimated with Monte Carlo events. However, Fisher's algorithm is not the only way how to find parameters of the linear discriminant. Another possibility is the simplest neural network called single layer perceptron. Let's recall that the general form of a linear discriminant is t of x vector is equal to w sub 0 plus a sum over i going from 1 to n w sub i x sub i. As always, x vector stands for the input variables. Our goal for the moment is to find suitable values of the parameters w vector. Before doing it, let's say openly that the exact form of the single layer perceptron test statistic is t of x vector is equal to f of w sub 0 plus the sum over i going from 1 to n w sub i x sub i. The function f is called activation function. If it is a monotonic function, and let's assume it is, then its presence makes no difference for the single layer perceptron. However, you will see later that the activation function is a key ingredient of a general neural network. A common choice of the activation function is the logistic sigmoid. f of y is equal to 1 over 1 plus e to the power of minus y. Another common choice is the hyperbolic tangent. f of y is equal to e to the power of y minus e to the power of minus y, all this over e to the power of y plus e to the power of minus y. Back to the determination of the parameters w vector of the linear discriminant. For this, we have to define a couple of entities. First, we need target or desired values of the test statistic for a background and for a signal event. If the activation function takes on values in the interval from 0 to 1, then the target values are t background is equal to 0 for background and t signal is equal to 1 for signal events. With the target values at hand, we can define the so-called error function. E of w vector is equal to 1 over n signal, the number of signal events, times the sum over j going over all our signal events, t of x vector sub j minus t signal, all this squared, plus 1 over n background, the number of background events in our Monte Carlo sample, times the sum over j going over all background events, t of x vector sub j minus t background and this squared. As said already, the sums run over all Monte Carlo background and signal events respectively. In a shorthand notation, we can write the error function like this. E of w vector is equal to the sum over j going over all signal and background events, E sub j of w vector. The neural network parameters w vector are simply 
those that minimize the error function. Simply, the minimization is not simple at all. The sums in the error function are huge. There can be millions or tens of millions Monte Carlo events easily. The error function might have several local minima. Not an easy task to minimize this. Instead of this bulk minimization based on the full error function, people often use a so-called sequential minimization that is based on the individual contributions E sub J. The sequential minimization proceeds in the following way. You start from some point in the space of the W vector parameters. You take a Monte Carlo event J and you calculate a gradient of the contribution E sub J at the point W vector. In the W vector space, you move along the gradient by a predefined step size eta. This brings you to a point W vector prime, which is equal to the W vector plus eta times the gradient of E sub J of W vector. Iterate like this over all your Monte Carlo events. This procedure might have its own issues, but it is much faster from the computing point of view than the bulk minimization. When talking about determination of the parameters W vector, people often say they train the neural network or they use the word learning somehow. This comes from the neurobiological terminology. However, it means nothing else than minimization of the error function. Also, people like drawing diagrams full of nodes and connecting lines to describe neural networks. The diagrams recall neurons and their synopses. In the diagrams, each node stands for one variable and each line denotes one parameter of the test statistic. The parameters can be also called weights or connection strength. For a single layer perceptron, the diagram says nothing else than that the test statistic is a linear combination of the input variables. Isn't it better to stick to the mathematical formula? Up to now, we invested a lot of effort into determination of a new linear discriminant, the single layer perceptron. But linear discriminants are of a very limited usage. Fortunately, the usefulness of linear discriminants can be increased by an incredible amount by a suitable transformation of input variables. For example, imagine a two-dimensional situation in which signal events are located inside a circle and background events are outside the circle. In this case, linear discriminant is useless but we can transform the variables x, y into r phi, a distance from the center of the circle and an azimuthal angle. All of a sudden, in the transformed variables, the linear discriminant provides the best possible separation of the signal and background events. This is basically the idea of real-life neural networks, the multilayer perceptrons. Let me repeat it. You take the input variables, you transform them, and the test statistic is a linear combination of the transformed variables. The key thing is that the transformation of variables is not linear. The nonlinearity of the transformation is achieved by the nonlinear activation function. Let's be explicit and write down the mathematical formula. The test statistic is t of x vector is equal to f of w sub 0 plus the sum over i going from 1 to m w sub i phi i of x vector. The transformed variables phi vector of x vector are 
phi i of x vector is equal to f of v sub i0 plus the sum over j going from 1 to n v sub ij x sub j. Note that the same activation function is used on both steps in the transformation of variables and in the test statistic evaluation. This is the common thing to do. Anyway, the importance of the nonlinear activation function is the introduction of nonlinearity to the transformation that would be linear otherwise. Also note that the number of the transformed variables doesn't need to be the same as the number of the original input variables. The choice of the number of the transformed variables is actually a delicate question. The determination of the parameters w sub i and v sub ij is done simultaneously. They are all determined by minimization of the error function that is defined in exactly the same way as for the single layer perceptron. With the nonlinear transformation of variables and with sufficiently large number of the transformed variables phi i, the neural network is able to describe fairly complicated shapes of the hypersurface defining background and signal-like regions of the phase space. Actually, there is a theorem stating that such a neural network can describe any function with any desired precision. In practice, one cannot afford too high number of the variables phi sub i. There would be too many parameters and, therefore, one would need an extremely large sample of Monte Carlo events to achieve a reasonably low variance of the parameters. Moreover, neural networks might suffer from the so-called overtraining if the number of the parameters to determine is too high for a given size of the training Monte Carlo sample. The output surface can do wiggles and it is able to isolate individual signal events. An overtrained neural network is able to separate signal from background up to perfectly on the training Monte Carlo sample. It is tuned to perform excellently on the training sample. However, when used on a statistically independent sample of events, the discrimination power is much lower. Clearly, the overtraining is an unwanted effect because it reduces the discrimination power effectively and it introduces unnecessarily complicated shapes of the test statistic. Typically, people avoid the overtraining by splitting the available Monte Carlo event sample into two parts. One part is the training sample and the other part is used to control the overtraining. If the error rates of the neural network differ for the training and for the testing samples, it is good to simplify the network architecture by, for example, decreasing the number of the transformed variables phi sub i. Actually, it is essential to split your available set of Monte Carlo events. Not just because of the overtraining control, but even more importantly, because of the estimation of the neural network output distribution. If you evaluated the output distribution on the training sample, you would risk too much. You would immediately suffer from even small overtraining. Imagine what would happen if you compared the biased output score distribution with an unbiased one, evaluated on the statistically independent data sample. However, if you estimate it with the use of the statistically independent testing sample, then you don't have to fear the overtraining that much. The overly complicated shape of the discriminating surface is not tuned to discriminate events on the testing sample. Up to now, we were describing 
a neural network with three layers, the input variables, the transformed variables, and the resulting test statistic. In the diagrammatic language of the neural network community, we've built a network with one hidden layer. In principle, we could insert more hidden layers to our network. This would correspond to a transformation of the transformed variables or to a transformation of transformed transformed variables or as mentioned previously the simplest multilayer perceptron with the three layers has the mathematical potential to be sufficient whether an insertion of an additional hidden layers is beneficial or not is probably case dependent and certainly we are unable to give any definite answer in this course. One very final remark. The output test statistic can have more components than just one. This can be useful when you need to distinguish the different background processes. One component of the test statistic discriminates, for example, TT bar events from all the rest. Second component can be for Z plus jets, third for Di boson, fourth for fakes, fifth for signal, and so on. So, we are done with the neural networks. As a summary, we can say that this MVA algorithm is based on the idea of a linear discriminant taking as input variables transformed by a non-linear transformation. Thanks to this, neural networks are able to approximate almost any function with any required precision. One would just need a huge number of hidden nodes and, consequently, a monstrous training Monte Carlo sample. A lot of attention must be paid to the network overtraining. You should always split your Monte Carlo events into a training and a testing sample. The neural network training stands for the determination of the network parameters by minimization of the error function. If you suffer from overtraining, you should consider changing the network architecture, for example, by decreasing the number of hidden nodes. Finally, let me say that the content of this video was heavily based on a series of four lectures given by Glenn Coven at CERN in 2008. I strongly encourage you to watch the whole series. The links are on your screen now and you can also find them in the comments to this video.